to have uh, three very well established gentlemen uh, to talk about the role of education and science in sports development. Uh, in a previous talk, we heard about uh, what we can do in terms of sports development, and one of the standout key that you could take from that is the fact that we need to have a vision and you, you could also tell that we do have talent here in Africa but one of the stumbling we've experienced in the past few years is education and that is a very important too. Let me start with you Dr. Pambo. You've had the opportunity to work with different people uh, in the facets that uh, you, when it comes to your role of work and what uh, you have to do would you say that the quality of people that you work with in the different aspects, different countries, different continents is telling? And could you shed more light on the difference that that makes in terms of the end result? Thank you so much and um, welcome to everyone here. Uh, great job done by the previous uh, members of the panel. So that's quite a tricky question to ask, but yes, um, there are differences when it comes to the expertise you would encounter at the various levels. So uh, the kind of expertise you would encounter at the level of FIFA will be very high level. Um, if you drop, yes, another high level. If you come home, there is another level. Now, the, the, the issue really would not be whether we have the human resource or the people available or not. The, the issue really would have to do with how we hire. Okay, so if you want a team doctor, let me use that as an example, or you want a club administrator, for example, and if you speak to our HR people, we have very standard ways of engaging people for various roles. Um, one of my mentors, Mr. Anthony Bafo, mentioned here that we don't need to be friends to be able to deliver. We just have to be competent to deliver. So at the end of the day, we're looking for competence. Now, if FIFA has to hire, the whole world gets to know that FIFA wants a technical director. If FIFA wants somebody to lead marketing, the whole world will get to know that FIFA is looking for somebody to lead the marketing department. And there will be several months for people to have access to that information and be able to put in an application together with your CV. And there will be an expert panel to look through that and hire the best. Now, any system where you have a shortfall in this process, then you're surely going to hire people who would not be up to the standard. So this is the difference I see at the various levels of operations. So if you go through the right channels and open up your hiring system or processes well enough, you would have the right people with the right expertise bringing in their CVs, you look through them, and then you'll be able to hire. So when you come home, then you realize that we have a bit of challenge at that level. So you realize you encounter, in my role, you encounter people you definitely feel should not be occupying certain roles, and you meet some people on the streets. You feel this person if the person had information, if the person had access, should do a better job or would do something much more better than what you see. So it's actually a problem with the hiring system. So there is a difference. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Just one second. Hello? 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 Okay, yeah, I think it's on now. Uh, you, you made a very fantastic point, Dr. Pombo. I, I like the part where you spoke of we having well-qualified people not getting access to some of these positions, which is really a real problem, not maybe in just your medical field, but across so many 
uh, industries. Even when you look at the sports in industry himself, itself, you can see teams where there are coaches there, even at the national team level, where if you talk with people in the industry, they can say that there are more qualified people than this guy. What do you think is the root of such a problem? Is it really a case of the information not reaching out there? Or then again, is it a mindset that we have here that some opportunities should be limited to just some people? Right, so you, you used one word that kept running through, which is the mindset. And I dare add another word, I think cultural, okay? Um, we, we, and it's not a sports problem, to be honest. It is a national problem uh, in the sense that, and I, 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 I dare to be a bit controversial here, that one of the smartest ways in this country to get a good job is to be aligned politically, right? And um, so you even see people occupying the highest of positions at even ministerial levels, and you probably think that other people could do the job right, but people are not permitted to be there because you didn't align a particular way prior to when. So we, we, we have a concept in Ghana, in Africa, where there is a time for us who suffered to benefit from our suffering, and there is a time. So you wait when it's your time, you come and you also, in quotes, enjoy. So the work I do as a professional, all right, through which I earn money, somebody might describe that as enjoyment, that is not right. So once we get that changed, then we'll begin to do the right things. I mean, we have young people who walk up to you and say, Dr. Pambo, yes, I'm not a medical person, but I want to go study sports management. I want to do this. And it's even difficult to encourage them to do that because you are almost 99% certain that a person will come back from Juni with a PhD in sports management and might not get a job in Ghana. Because nobody is going to advertise for a position for the role of a sports management or a, a sports manager or an administrator for a club or a national team or any level or even at the level of the ministry that we are hiring people with this qualification. All right, so we don't hire and put qualifications there. If you put there that I need somebody with a qualification in sport administration, minimum requirement is what, a master's. Then you have those five people who struggle through school uh, and, and attain a master's degree in sports administration, showing up for an interview, and you hire, those people will definitely deliver. I mean, it's not by accident that somebody gets to be awarded a degree or a master's or a PhD. It's not by accident. So until we change that mindset and begin to let people earn the positions we want them to, and through that, you can demand the right things from them. Because when you go for interviews, okay, you are literally being interviewed on your, your, on your job description, what you expected to come and deliver. You'll be interviewed on that. And those people who interview you mostly will include your bosses. When you come and you are not performing, they will call you. And say, so, okay, during the interview, you made this, you said that, you said that, why are you not? But if the person just woke up to a text message, and said, uh, could you come, there's a job here. The person didn't tell you what he or she could do, yeah. and then you hired the wrong person. That is our problem. Well, you make some very fantastic points, Dr. Pambo. I'll come back to you, but let me go to Dr. Ba. Uh, you know, Dr. Pambo mentioned leadership in this, and it's one thing that we cannot ignore. Uh, you've had the privilege of engaging with government and uh, people in high positions. Uh, why do you think there hasn't been sufficient maybe sports education uh, or deliberate attempts by government to ensure that we're educating a lot of people in sports uh, you know, fields and all that? Because education is very high on the agenda of every government and we've seen how many times you know, the government have been so interested in free education and all that. Why are we not seeing that dedication towards sports in our industry? All right. Thank you, and thank you to the organizers. I also want to say thank you to my Director General, Professor Peter Chumesi, National Sports Authority, for allowing me to be part of this program. Um, I 
will say that we cannot put the blame on only the government, that the state, for a number of reasons. I would rather say that the states and other stakeholders have the responsibility to ensure that we get enough qualified sports trained personnel in Ghana. I'm saying this because Ghana as a developing country has limited resources, which so many sectors and issues are competing for. And then even if you look at education alone, we need a number of other professionals. We need teachers, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need accountants, we need carpenters, we need engineers, and so many others, including sports personnel. The resources are not adequate. So government previously will not put all the resources into only sports because other sectors require that. Also, if you look at what we ourselves as Ghanaians have done to ourselves, it has also not helped. Parents, teachers, students, ourselves did not see sports as a big area to enter. And I will give you an example uh, about what teachers uh, also do to discourage uh, students. In the 80s, I was at a commercial school, and one fine afternoon, we were on break, and we went to the pitch to play. The next teacher was economics uh, tutor. He came a bit earlier, and then when he saw us on the pitch, he called us and said, you people, instead of reading your economic books to wait for me, you are on the pitch training. And I can assure you, no matter how hard you train, you can never play for Kotoko. That is what he said. You can never play for Kotoko. What he was trying to say was that we should concentrate on our books instead of sports. That time, some of us who loved our books more than maybe sports didn't see anything wrong with that. But going up and analyzing it, I saw that even from that point, some of the students who were very good, very, very good at sports, were discouraged. They, they got to know that, that that is not where they should have their interest. So we as citizens have to know that now sports is a multi-billion dollar industry and it is good for our nation, it is good for Africa, so we should encourage people to venture into it. Whereas the government is putting up the infrastructure, the policies and systems to get us into those training institutions. So for now, this is what I will say. Thank you. Uh, you do also make some really fantastic points, uh, especially I love the mindset and the mentality point yeah. that even from a young age, yeah. you must not discourage young people to see sports as something of an amusement or something for fun. And sports has developed over the years and has become a tool for social economic development. Yeah. Uh, but you speak of government playing its part. We'll come to the private sector much later. But you speak of government playing its part in terms of infrastructure, policy development, and so on. Uh, do you have any idea of any plans or rollouts that have taken place so far in terms of maybe are there any policies, are there any specific plans that government are, or the yeah. National Sports Authority are taking to ensure that in the next 10, 15 years, we would see a lot more people be encouraged to get into the sports industry? All right, thank you. As I'm talking, as a country, we are about launching our national sports policy. Uh, the national sports policy, uh, when it comes out, will look at the area of education and training. Uh, I will mention about two, three uh, chapters I know in that document, which is yet to be launched. For example, we have a chapter talking about foundation sports. 
And those foundation sports is uh, going to talk about sports and education, the physical education that we have at our schools, basic schools and secondary schools. Uh, it is also going to look at our educational institutions and how they can help in training and development of our sportsmen and women. Uh, and then the communities where we have the talent. Another chapter is looking at talent identification and development. And here the focus is going to be on scouting and nurturing and then development of these young talents when they are identified. And there is also another chapter looking at training and development of personnel, both technical and administrative and management personnel. So all these are part of the document which will come out very soon. But even without that, we have the Sports Act 2016, Act 934, which has governed our sports uh, industry in this country up to this level. And in that, you know we have the sports being under the Ministry of uh, uh, Youth and Sports. And under Ministry of Youth and Sports, we have three agencies. We have the, ministry, uh, we have the National Youth Authority, then we have the National Sports Authority, and then the National Sports College, Winneba. The National Sports College and the National Sports Authority are there for the education, training, and development of sportsmen and women. So I will say that as a country, we have documents guiding us to ensure that we have uh, uh, adequate uh, uh, development for our sportsmen and women. All right, thank you very much. You did mention University of Winneba, so it's a good time to go to Dr. Sapon. Um, we've seen your institution take sports very serious uh, in the past few years. Uh, can you throw more light on how it began, what are some of the courses that you take, and also, most importantly, why you think a lot more other schools, not just in Ghana, but Africa, are not following suit and given a lot of attention to sports courses, especially at the tertiary level. Right. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I'll say I'm very much grateful to the organizers and everyone. You see, it is very important for us to know that sports is not just going out to play. A lot go into, goes into it. As we sit here, we have Coach Didi Dramani here. We have Coach Basigi here. These are all alumni of University of Education Winneba from the Fiscal Education Department. And I must say, if you follow their exploits, it tells you that proper development, training, and planning will always yield good results. For the University of Education Winneba, it started from 1974, where it was called Specialist Training College. Here, People from places came together who were sportsmen and women, and they started diploma in physical education. Currently, as we speak, we have five different programs at the department where we do MPhil in physical education with electives in adapted physical education, sports management and administration, recreation and leisure, sports and exercise science, and um, others. So what we have done is to ensure that if we see people who are very good sports-wise, we pick them, we nurture them, and we train them using scientific principles. And so that has been our um, 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 trump card. In the just-ended Commonwealth Games, two of our students were there. William Amponsan, who broke the national record in 5,000 meters, is actually a third year student in my department. Gifty Oku, Gifty, she was part of the 4 by 100 team. She was also, she's also part of our students, and she actually won gold at FASU in Kenya. Why am I going this way? I want people to know 
But when it comes to sports, the most important thing is the science aspect of it. We can do all the marketing, we can do all the things, but when people come and they don't see good skills, they don't see good talent, they become discouraged. They wouldn't come and watch matches. For example, I can go to watch Premier League match in Ghana, and I'll ask myself, what am I going to see? But if we put in the right measures, we train people according to scientific principles, I believe that we can develop talents, and the game will be interesting, and from there we can rake in the, or the uh, finance or all the profits we want to rake in. If you go to places like Nigeria, one thing we must know, that for every university, they have stadium. I did my PhD in Nigeria, University of Ilorin. It's one of the best universities. They have their own stadium. They have their own indoor facilities and all that. And they do scientific training. We had FASU recently. American University of Cairo. They were the best. They won several medals because they have taken sports science seriously. So for me, I think that the way forward is for us to understand the scientific aspect of sports so that we can train our athletes well to meet current or modern trends. That's a, that's a very well put answer. I really like the inclusion of science in everything that we do when it comes to sports, uh, especially it helps us become more efficient in our decision making and all that. But I also want to find out from you, there is a seeming gap developing where we're seeing people pick up positions or executive roles, but the experiences and knowledge that they are coming from is not necessarily from primary sports education. So for instance, someone will be working in a sports management field, but they didn't necessarily pick up the education in sports management. They are applying general business concept or they did a business, a general business course in school and they are occupying sports positions currently. What was your overall assessment and what do you think could potentially be the dangers in having people who don't have that qualified sports you know, degrees filling up these positions and making decisions for us all? Well, you know, the answer is obvious. When Dr. Ba was speaking, he was talking about a teacher who was saying that instead of reading your economics books, you are playing football. We all know how many times people cry when Ghana plays matches and lose. But the problem is, like Dr. Pambo also said, we don't have a lot of opportunities. And so somebody does maybe general administration and then veer off into sports because we believe that they can apply the principles there. But you see, if you do general administration, it is not the same as sports management and administration. There are specific courses, models, and concepts that you need from sports management that will help you to become a better manager of sports. All right. So for me, the right way to go is to ensure that we, allow, we let people know the career pathway we have in physical education and sports so that we can train them accordingly. And that is why I believe that the time has come for us to restructure curriculum, okay, so that they will fall in place with current trends. Because if I am a coach, for example, I'm supposed to know about the workings of the human body, but I found myself as a coach because I was just a, a former player. All right, but I don't know so much about even how to find the aerobic capacity of my athletes. I train them anyhow, I feed them anyhow, and they go to the field and play. The next morning, they are all broken down. You see, so for me, I think it is obvious that if you don't put the right people in the right places, we are not going to get it right. So the good thing is that we must restructure our curriculum, and that is why we believe that those of you in the media should let people know because Mr. Bafu was surprised to know that we do sports management in Winneba. Even at the UCC, they do sports management at the PhD level. But how many of us are aware of this? Because we don't take sports serious. 
we believe that sports is just running, throwing, and all that. But a lot more go into that. So I believe that the time has come for us to make the noise about this. And once the right people are trained and put in places, we can get it better. Well, well put, uh, sir. Uh, but you, I, I mean, I really love what your school does, especially alongside UCC. I interviewed uh, Dennis Corsa of Heart of Oak uh, some months ago, and he mentioned that he also did uh, his bachelor's in health and physical education at UCC. And that was actually how he got the opportunity to get into the UCC team and play for Busia Drafts and play for uh, his dream team, Heart of Oak. And so there is always a way one to find yourself in the industry. Uh, but let me come to you, Dr. Pambo. Um, we, we did, the conversation is gearing towards the need for science right now, uh, if we're looking forward. Maybe unfortunately, as things stand, we have leaders who don't have much appreciation uh, for the inclusion of data and science in some of these decision making. And as a result, we've had a bit of chaotic moments uh, in our industry that we don't have to mention. What do you think is the way forward? Uh, do we, is it, is it a case, I want you to look at it from short term and long term. How do we address our leaders up there right now who don't have the appreciation for science? And then in the grassroots, how do we ensure that we develop people who also grow up with their appreciation for science and sport? Thank you very much. Um, so to continue from where I left off uh, previously, so one of the things which will influence the quality you would have at the top would be the, the size of the purse you take into the market or the weight of the purse you take into the market. So I have done things for FIFA and I know how you get compensated. I've done things for CAF and I know how you get compensated. I've done things for GFA and I know how you get compensated. And I've done three things for almost all the clubs in Ghana because they can't compensate. So if I'm worth who I think I am and you put out an ad there wanting someone, salaries negotiable, all right, and back door, I get to know the weight of the purse you hold in. You wouldn't get some quality. So that also is a signal that we need to invest heavily in sports and be patient enough to know that we would reap over a period of time. So we should be mindful. Because the experts we, we see at those levels are not just there because they are experts. I mean, they have families back home to take care of. And whatever they've invested in themselves, they expect to reap accordingly. And then we, we need to be mindful. Now, to come to people appreciating the science of sport or the medicine of sport, I think we have said it several in this country. If we keep ignoring the very technical aspect of sport, and when I use the global word technical, it includes sports science, sports medicine, um, coaching and everything, the science aspect of it. If we keep ignoring that, we wouldn't excel the way we would want to. I have encountered quite a number of um, administrators and managers who are very reluctant to put in money when it comes to the sports medical side of things. When, when I came back after training, I was very uh, zealous when it comes to organizing training programs for the physios, the masters of the various clubs and we're not getting the kind of results we wanted because when they go back to the clubs and demand of their team managers that we need this amount of money or we will need you to buy cold spray I mean the one we run on the pitch and even use on players all right they want some amount of money to purchase those things the managers and administrators at that point didn't even appreciate it. So we started inviting team managers, some club owners, some coaches to some of our training sessions. And then it made life a bit easy for the, the, the physios and the masters who were attached to these local teams. So if we get those right people, to appreciate that the technical aspect, the science aspect would help us win, then we will be able to go far. 
So yes, it starts by hiring the right people. And then also the already existing structures like we used to do at the FA uh, level. I mean, pre-season, we, we, we normally did a lot of trainings, okay, for various people. And we did to the extent that we even included referees in some of the training, just to make sure that everyone who is associated with sport gets to appreciate that there's science, there's medicine to it. So they would have to take care. Now, we did research work in this country in 2012 uh, to study injury patterns, okay, in the Premier League. And we noticed that we had a lot of ankle injuries, all right, and it was the leading, I mean, injuries, the leading set of injuries we had in our Premiership. Then we were able to zero down to a particular club, okay, Bronga Hafu, so I'm coming home now, okay, and they had a lot of that. Okay, so we decided to go check their pitch out. And Oreku, trust me, if you walked 100 meters on that pitch without being tackled, without a ball, by the time you finish the 100 meter walk, you would have to sustain an ankle injury yourself. So we, we, we just needed to point that out to the, the coaches, point that out to the club administrators, that you know, you just needed to, to fix a basic problem here or better still, change even this venue. I mean, whoever um, licensed that venue to host premiership games was another thing altogether. You know, but we were able to educate the, the, the owners of the club, the coaches, to appreciate that week in, week out, you are losing players and losing matches just because of this problem. Okay, so if it gets fixed, so you invest some money in fixing this pitch, all right, you get players playing longer, you wouldn't spend money fixing injuries, and some of the injuries will become chronic, all right? Fast forward, seasons to come, I think they tried to do something about it, and they saw some results. Now, where did the advice come from? It didn't come from, I mean, just having a good dream in my home, but there was research, okay? That research was, was funded by FIFA, to be honest, okay? Supported by the FA. Results of that was communicated to, communicated to coaching staff. If by then we had a very vibrant club line system, all right, then we were going to tell them that out of data we generated from just asking basic questions, and vis those are we had teams that was a man and all that, visiting them and putting things right. Maybe the whole country, we probably can have only four pitches, okay, to host our game. It's going to help people like Kodidi because at the end of the day, we injure all these players at the premiership level, throw them to come to the national team to play, all right? Then he's struggling, okay? Because almost everybody has a chronic injury, all right? So if we learn to appreciate that and learn to get science and football to work together, then we're going to reap um, a very good harvest. Well, just for your closing thoughts, uh, Dr. Pambo, if there's someone in this room or beyond watching online and wants to gain access to you know, training tools or educational resources on sports science, sports medicine, or sports management, we know that for the IOC and FIFA, they usually have courses available does CAF, which is much closer to home here in Africa, have anything similar? And what would you advise uh, someone to do, someone who is interested in getting into these fields? Right, thank you. So CAF and FIFA work together to develop a FIFA diploma, a FIFA sports medicine, or we call it football medicine diploma program. Okay, so it's owned by FIFA, but if you go through the content, you realize that a lot of members from the CAF Medical Committee, where I belong, uh, made a lot of contributions to that uh, uh, platform. So I'm happy to say one of the guys who currently works with us um, on the national team, a fitness coach, went through that diploma training program, and it's very comprehensive. So there is that program, and I think it's, it's literally uh, a one-stop shop uh, for anyone who hasn't gone through the, the formal uh, sports medicine, sports science education. So this uh, FIFA diploma in football medicine, it's online and uh, you go through it, quite a number of models. By the time you finish, you have the basics. And I would recommend this um, coaches can 
go get it. Um, referees can go get it. I mean, sports managers can all go. It, you would understand. And we actually have broken it down to the level of a lay person. You don't even need to have a science background. So that is the master program. Now, what CAF used to do prior to COVID was that the, the CAF Medical Committee, and I'm sure uh, Mr. Bafo would confirm this, we used to organize a lot of workshops uh, for various medics from member associations. So from time to time, there'll be communications to the uh, FAs to bring two or three doctors or physios for uh, a training workshop in doping control, training workshop in injury management and all that. I think COVID moved such things to the virtual platforms. Uh, hopefully very soon all those will be coming back. But just go grab um, the, the, the FIFA diploma uh, football medicine program and you are good to go. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Pambo. Uh, let me come to you, Dr. Ba. In your first assertions, you did mention a very key point that it's not up to government alone to help educate the masses when it comes to sports. What are some of the roles that you think the private sector could also be included? Thank you. And before that, let me add to what Dr. Sapon said about uh, tertiary institutions that are into sports. We have University of Health and Allied Sciences, uh, who they have a whole school uh, dedicated to sports, school of sports. Uh, and within that, they also have a department for sports medicine. We also know KUST also doing sports courses. And at the National Sports Authority, we are also working with the Ghana Education Service and we are working hand in hand with the, uh, uh, I would say, PE coordinators at the various uh, districts and, and schools. So as a country, we are uh, doing, we are improving our perception about what sports can do for the country in terms of development. We, we are uh, up in the game. Your question, the private sector has a huge role that they can play to help the sport development in Ghana. Uh, the National Sports Authority doors are open. In fact, the National Sports Authority is the state agency that is supposed to develop, promote, and manage sports in this country. And there are a lot of things that we can do together with the uh, uh, private sector. Uh, we, if you look at equipment for training, for example, most of our coaches and sport development officers need a lot of uh, equipment and we also need training equipment at the stadia, the various stadia we have in the country so that when somebody enters, the equipment are there, a whole lot of uh, disciplines can, can, uh, they can train on. Then we also look at training of personnel because that was one of the issues you first raised that we do not have enough personnel who are qualified and training of our coaches sports development officers and others we need the private sector to partner us because it requires a lot of resources and then we can also look at developing the various pitches in this country over the last five years this government has done so well by <coughs> constructing over 100 as to test in this country. Before that, we had less than three, but within the last five years, we, we have over 100 of that. And the private sector can also come in to help us get these pitches at all the uh, communities where we want to develop this young talent. So they should first of all come to us. We discuss areas we can collaborate we can also help the various tertiary institutions that I have mentioned that they are also doing uh, uh, sports courses. And the National Sports College at Widiba, for example, last six weeks we were there doing course for uh, coaches of disability sports. And I can say that they need uh, support. So I will also uh, invite the private sector to look at them also. Thank you.
Well, thank you very much, Dr. Ba. D Dr. Sapon, I'll come to you on one thing that Dr. Ba said, that's training the right people. I'll ask you about how you think we can achieve that. Uh, but Dr. Ba mentioned something really interesting that I know I said I'm done with you, but I just wanted you to touch on briefly. The AstroTurf, there's been discussions of it, the positive and the negative. The negative is there could possibly be some side effects. Uh, is there any medical research that proves that and how can we use that in our thinking when we're developing these tests? Right, thank you very much. So you would need to be asking what is the alternative to the AstroTurf? We do not have any better alternative. Okay, so we, we are happy that we are having AstroTurfs coming up to replace the gravels and the gutters that people were playing on. That's, that's the first thing. And a lot of technology is gone now into the astrotypes we are having. Uh, so reducing the predisposition to the ankle injuries and all the problems we have always talked about. So um, that uh, predisposition to injuries has really diminished now. So um, more astrotypes, we are happy. More grass, we are happy. They are definitely better than the gravels we used to play on. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pombo. Uh, but just to wrap up this uh, panel discussion, let me end with you, Dr. Sapon. It's always important to look at human resource. If we are to raise the next generation of people who imbibe sport, um, science and how they look at sports, a lot would depend on those who train them. Uh, what do you think are some of the steps that we can take in the right way to empower <coughs> the people who can lead uh, the, this new generation coming in terms of training? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I believe it is long overdue, but better late than never. Currently, like Dr. Ban said, we have about six institutions in Ghana offering different courses in physical education, sports, and medicine. When you go to UHAS, University of Health and Allied Sciences, like he said, I mean, we did some work there. Myself and Dr. Pombo did some work there in that particular department for, to, get, to get them accreditation. They are going through programs like sports medicine. They are doing physiotherapy. They are doing sports management. And so if you are a secondary school student, who is graduating from SHS, and you believe that sports is your thing, we think that we can give certain individual scholarship to carry out such programs so that they will be better qualified and prepared to take over um, positions in sports. One other thing I want to say is recruitment. There are people, for example, in sports coaching, but after you have done degree in sports coaching, specializing in particular sports, you also have to do some calf sense licensure exam or something. And so we believe that one of the things we want to do is to speak with GFA so that at part of our training, we will have the licensure as part of it. So once somebody finishes university doing sports and exercise science or doing maybe BSc sports coaching, that person would have gone through the licensure program alongside with academic degree so that he can better fit into, into. So that is one thing we are trying to do. So we have spoken to majority of the associations, Ghana Handball Association, Ghana Volleyball Association, and all that, so that as part of our training in the various universities, we will also do the practical aspect of management, coaching, sports medicine, and others. So I believe that that is the best way to go. So in effect, I think that we need to restructure curriculum to be in line with modern trends. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Prince Pambo, uh, Dr. Enoch Ba, and then Dr. Emmanuel Osei Sapon. Uh, can we have a round of applause for the three of them?